This episode of Believe is brought to you by Cryptid Coffee Co. Use promo code BELIEVE on checkout for 10% off their Angry Yowie Coffee Blend. Head over to cryptid.com.au to check them out. It was just the most massive thing I've ever seen. I, to tell you the honest truth, I thought, well, we're the only ones left on this planet. Something's happened. We've missed something here. The fear that went in me when I seen it was just, un- like, the feeling. I'd say it was fear, but I've never felt that feeling before in my entire life. It's a weird feeling. Like, you can't explain it when you don't know. You feel like you're being followed, but you don't know what it is. We had two to our right, another one in front of us, another one to the left, and another one just across the road, shaking the daylight out of the tree. All we get is a big red eye. I remember waking up and looking at the end of the bed, and there was a figure there, almost insect-like, and then I blacked out. Welcome to the show, everyone. My name is Cade Moyer, and you are listening to the Believe Paranormal and UFO Podcast. If you have had an encounter and would like to share it, please get in touch with me. My email address is believepod at gmail.com. If you enjoy the podcast, be sure to leave us a rating or review wherever you listen and head on over to our website, believepod.com, and consider becoming a member to get bonus episodes and video content. Tonight I'm joined by Luke, and Luke had a fascinating UFO encounter in Canberra back in 1992. Luke, welcome to the show. Hi, how are you going? It's good, mate. It's great to have you here. Your encounter is incredible. I'm just going to say that kind of off the bat, but Luke, take us back to when this all happened and just walk us through the event, if you don't mind. Yeah, well, okay. So, um... About, uh, it was around 92, maybe 93. It's been a, a long time. But um, I was uh, at the Snowy Mountains skiing for the first time, actually. And we were coming back from um, the Snowies and we stopped in Canberra. And we um, left Canberra and we were going to Wollongong, which were, at the time was my hometown. So uh, in between Canberra and uh, Goulburn, I think it was, uh, we're, we're driving along. My friend was driving, and um, I was just looking around, as you do, and there was this uh, kind of thing in the sky. It was like a star, but it was moving radically um, through the sky. So... I, I said to my mate, can you see that? Can you see that star thing moving around in the sky? And he's going, well, yeah, I can, you know. I said, how about you pull over? Um, it might be because the road's bumpy and we're just looking at a star and it's kind of moving as it's, as the road's going up and down, you know. So uh, he pulled over and we we both got out of the car and we'll, we'll, he came around to my side and we're looking at this star well i don't i don't think it was a star this thing was moving radically around the sky you know going all these different directions and all of a sudden it uh, just kind of stopped lit up a bit and disappeared and uh, i said to my mate wow man I wonder what that was you know and um you know he's he was the same he's gone wow and um next thing you know uh we were about to get back into the car and I looked over and it was like uh, big paddocks everywhere. It was kind of like a wheat fields and stuff. And um, I looked over and there was these four big, well, as they call them now, I, I figured out they were uh, orbs, big, huge orbs, maybe about 500 metres away from us going across this big paddock. And we, I said to him, wow, look at that. And he's kind of, because he was going around to jump in the car, he kind of went, he looked and he's kind of, he was stunned just like me. And he came back around my side of the car and, and we're watching these orbs kind of go over the paddock. And there, there was four of them. And, you know, they were just steadily going, maybe 20 kilometres an hour, you know, not fast, just floating along this paddock. 
And um, one by one, they just kind of disappeared. And we were like awestruck, kind of going, wow, wow, what was that, you know? And um, we're kind of looking around in the sky a bit more and we're kind of going, wow, where are they gone? And next thing you know, there was this, um, these big crafts appeared. There was like, um, well, I kind of would say they looked like um, like a horseshoe, you know, and um, the bottom of them was like, I don't know if you've ever done it before, but if you got some copper and you hit it with a flame and all of the different colours, or well, it, it lights up really hot and you get these really cool colours, you know, on the copper. Well, it was kind of like that, the bottom of these crafts. And when you drop a feather and the feather kind of floats down, well, it was the same kind of movement, but they weren't dropping. They were just kind of floating around in the sky. There was like four of them in front of us. And they were only about 100 metres, maybe 200 metres away from us and maybe 300 metres high. And um, we were standing there going, whoa, you know. And I'm, I'm like, scared. And I'm saying to my friend, let's get out of here, you know, let's get out of here. And he's a little bit more, you know, not scared. And he's going, oh, telepathically think that you want to go with them, Luke. And I'm thinking, no, 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 let's get out of here, you know. <laughs> so anyhow, these... um. We, we stayed there a bit longer and we were watching these things and two of them started to uh, float up in the air and, like, there was no noise, n nothing, you know. And uh, these two things started... Two of them started moving up, the ones that were in the middle, and then they kind of gone up so you kind of just could see them and then the other two came in and then they started going up and then the other two that was up came back down and it was kind of like they were both going alternatively kind of going up and then down up and then down and we watched that for maybe uh, i don't know but we watched them do it a few times and uh I, I said to my mate come on man let's just get out of here you know so we jumped into the car we drove off down the road and we got to uh, golden Anyhow, so we're, we're in Goulburn and we pulled over at this service station and we got something to eat and we were talking about it like, wow, and we were telling these people about it and they're all kind of like, oh, really, really? You know, I don't think they believed us at all. And then we jumped, we were going back to the car. So I was driving this time, so I jumped in the driver's side and as uh, we were going to the car... We kind of looked down the street and where we had stopped, which was out of town, maybe 10k or something, we seen these big four orbs again, right, most probably where we were, you know, where we were parked on the road. So anyhow, we're kind of going, look, look, and I'm saying to my mate, look, 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 there they are, you know, and uh, he, he's there and we're staring at them, at them again. So we jumped into uh, the car and we, we took off and we're heading out of Goulburn. Um, after that, they, as we're driving, because um, I was driving, I was just watching the road and my, my friend's gone, um, oh, wow, look, there's this big, huge light following us, you know. It's on, the, it's on my side and then he's kind of looking around and behind him and he's going... Wow, man, it's getting closer and closer, you know. And I, I couldn't turn around because I was driving. And so, with um, I, I was just thinking, geez, it would be good to see this again, you know, because this is a thing that you've never seen before. And when you see it, you just want to see it again. So I was kind of thinking, geez, maybe I should pull over. I wish I could see it again. And then before you know it, this um, big bright light. It was kind of like, um, I don't know, do you know if you, you've got a big truck behind you at night and you look through the rear vision mirror and it's just the big light behind you if they've got their high beams on? Well, it was kind of like that, but it was in the sky. 
I mean, anyhow, it, it flew past us, and um, when it, it came in front of us, but it was maybe about three or four, maybe five k's down the road. But it was just this big, huge light, and um, you know, I kind of had to slow down because of the light. You know what I mean? Um, and and then all of a sudden, it came onto my side of the road. My side of the driving, like, you know, my side of the driver's side. And it would would have been, you know, again, about five kilometres out. And it just lit up even more. And, like, do you know when uh, on them old television sets where you, you know, you'd turn it off and it would, uh, like, light right up and then just go into a really small dot and then just the TV would turn off. Do, yeah. do you remember that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, it was kind of like that. It was like um, this big light in the sky, huge. It was like kind of like a big blinding light. And then all of a sudden you could just see the light kind of come in on itself and then become a dot. And then it was just like, poof, gone. <laughs> you know, and um, yeah, so uh, that was basically it for that. So um, it was very exciting and all. Now, uh, I've, at that time, I'd never thought of uh, UFOs, aliens, anything like that in my life. It was just non existent. I just never thought of that before. And um, But uh, since I've seen that, it's kind of like. You know that. Uh, well, the well, story tells itself, and like it's true. You know. Yeah, it kind of changes everything for you. Yeah, no, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, that is quite an exciting night there, Luke, because you've had what's that? Three or four interactions with this with this light, or multiple lights actually, and all of them are quite fascinating. To to be honest, it's. These are the kind of encounters that a lot of people would kind of dream of. And you were lucky enough to to share it with someone else because these types of encounters can leave a lot of people kind of questioning, geez, did I did I actually see what I saw? But you you had someone else there to to kind of back you up on it all. Yeah, no, that's right. So when we got back to Wollongong, uh, there was this um we, we stopped at my mate's place and um, got out of the car and he, we seen his neighbours and that, which were like, uh, they're the same age as us at the time. And we were talking to them and straight away we, we told them what happened and they've gone to us. They, oh, well, we're not gonna, we don't believe you until you report it to the police, you know. And it's kind of, we both looked at each other and said, not a problem. And we jumped back into the car with these people that we told and uh, we went to the police station and we did report it. And um, the police were, you know, kind of, uh, when are you going to phone home and stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> and so, um, you know, we reported it and basically got laughed at by the police. But they did say, the, the police did say that there was other sightings of... Um, big coloured balls going uh, through west of Sydney, you know, and um, there was a fair few sightings reported uh, that night. Oh, really? Uh, yes, yes, so uh, that's what they said. And uh, so basically the people that we told then believed us, you know, so it was kind of, it's one of them things where, you know, people really don't believe that they... They, they they've got to see it themselves to to believe. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so. yeah. No, and and you know that that's frustrating, I guess, in its own right. That they kind of only would take your, I guess, your point of view seriously if you went to the police to say, no, we we saw something weird. Yeah, yeah. No, that's right. Yeah, and uh, it's just that actually, it's been it was, um, you know. Like I was telling you before, it's uh, when when you tell people about a, a sighting, especially like that, over the years, you know, so from the time to now, 
I've told a fair few people about it. And, um, you know, the first time, oh, we don't believe you till you report it. And then, so you report it, so then people believe you. And then you, you know, tell other people, and it's kind of like, oh, wow, what were you on? Were you on drugs or something? Or were you doing this? Or were you pissed? Or, you know, you know what I mean? And it's kind of like, no, we weren't. And this is what happened. And if you don't believe me, here's a phone number and you ring this guy because he was with me and he'll tell you exactly, exactly what I told you. And, um, you know, some people have gone, oh, okay, then we'll give us the phone number. And I have. And <laughs> oh, my wow. mate has told them exactly, you know. And, uh, but over the years, as the, as it's got further and further on, um, somebody will, because I don't really mention it much anymore, but somebody will talk about it and um, talk about UFOs and I'll go, oh, yeah, I believe you because this is what I've seen. And I tell them and they go, wow, I've seen this. And so it's becoming more common. More people are, are seeing um, things like, uh, you know, that are in the sky and stuff like that. Yeah, so, definitely. We're, we're in a, a very different world from, I guess, when you had this sighting back in 92, 93, because the the whole thing about seeing a UFO is not really like a taboo thing anymore. It's it's almost like a, a trendy thing now to say, hey, guess what I saw? Yes. Yes, it is. Yes. So you you said that you weren't really into the the whole world of UFOs and, and things like that before you had this encounter. Obviously, an encounter like this is quite a shift in the paradigm for for one, um, what was the ongoing effects from that? Because I could imagine you're not interested in this type of stuff. And then you see this thing that is, you know, potentially from out of this world. What's that do to your mindset? Does that kind of change everything for you? And now a quick word from our sponsor. Also, are you wanting more content? Why not become a Believe Plus member? You'll get access to exclusive podcasts and episodes that aren't available to the public. Not only that, you'll also get our regular feed without any ads. Head to believepod.com forward slash plus to sign up today for just $5 a month. Um, well, at the time, um, afterwards, and, you know, I'd tell people, it was kind of like, a lot of people didn't believe me, you know, so um, it was just kind of like, oh, okay, I'll leave it like that. And if somebody ever mentions UFOs or something, I'll tell my story. But otherwise, I'll just leave it because nobody believes you, you know. And it's kind of makes you kind of think to yourself, well, did I really see that? And then you kind of think, well, of course I've seen that. You know, my mate was right next to me and he's seen that. You know, every time I talk to my friend about it or see him, um, we talked about it, you know. Uh, you know, and so you kind of, yeah, I, I, I don't know. It's just um, over the years, actually more that the internet's come, you know, because I, I didn't have the internet back in them days, you know, so we didn't have the, uh, you know, people... Uh, doing videos of UFOs or, you know, things like that. So once the internet come, I, um, you know, you know, I, I, I Googled UFO sightings and stuff like that and I realised that there's more and more to it and there's more people out there. Actually, there's like millions of people that have seen them and stuff like that. So... You know, um, it's kind of makes you realise, um, yeah, makes you really realise that there's more out there than um, people believe. Yeah, if, absolutely. If you know I mean. Oh, totally, totally. And, you know, it would have been quite a, I imagine it would have been quite a humanising moment to, to realise that, you know, you're not the only people person who's seen something like this. You and your mate 
aren't crazy because, you know, there's there's communities out there now that share stories like this. You know, this podcast exists to to help individuals like y- yourself share their encounters without the, the fear or the ridicule of, you know, being judged about what you saw. Yeah, no, that's it. That was uh, one thing that got me really was being judged. You know, it's kind of like, um, you know, and not only being judged, it's kind of like people judge you and then they ask you this question, and they ask you that question, and then it's kind of like, oh, but you just said this and you said that. Oh, you're you're a bullshit artist, you know, and it's kind of like, well, well, no, I'm not. This is what happened. So you, you're you getting, like, um, judged, and that's one thing I didn't really enjoy, you know, um, but like I said, over the years, uh, like, you know, now, um, you t- like everybody's talking about it, you know, and when you tell them what you're seeing, they kind of, like, go, you know, they believe you. There's no, um, you know, being called a bullshit artist or anything like that. Yeah. You know? Yeah, so, absolutely. That's right, yeah. So, yeah. When you were seeing these these craft and these orbs, was there any type of sound going on that would make you think that what you were seeing was something that was man-made or anything like that? No, mate. No, there was no sound at all. At all. There was no sound at all. It was amazing. The uh, And the way, like I was saying, you know, when you drop a feather and it kind of, you know, it kind of glides down... Um, that's the movement that we that well that we've seen on the crafts, you know. And these crafts, they weren't like small crafts, you, you know. They were like two cars, you know. There was two like four of these things that were the size of like two two ca- uh, two cars, you know. And they were just kind of like hanging there in the sky, like a feather falling, but they weren't falling, and there was no noise at all, you know. And it was really like, you know, wow, like, you kind of just, wow, look at that, what the, you know, and um, uh, it was just an amazing thing, and uh, yeah, I'll never, ever forget it, I'll never forget it, it was just an amazing thing that happened. Did you think there was intelligent control behind the the crafts that you saw because it sounds like you you potentially saw a couple of different clusters of of ufos mm. yeah um well when that light that was following us uh when we left golden and like i was saying i was thinking gee wish i i wish i could see this what what my friend's seeing that's following us and um it kind of came out in front of me and then it came over to my side and just hung with us for a while and then just disappeared. Well, you kind of think, well, geez, that heard me say that. You know what I mean? It, it, it's kind of, that's amazing how I was just thinking, I want to see that again. And it came in front of me and then to my side, um, and then disappeared. So I dare say there, it would have been, in, um, intelligent. Well, there's something flying it, you know. Do you think what you saw was from Earth? Do you think it was something that was man-made, or do you think it was something different? Uh, I don't think it was man-made. You know, what was what would be like that in two thousand? I mean, in nineteen ninety-one. You know what I mean? I I don't I don't think it came from from Earth. I, yeah, I don't think it did. No. I think it was from the stars. What does your your friend think of the the whole situation? Because before we started recording, you you've kind of started to embrace the the whole UFO, uh, I guess lifestyle is what I would say. Has your friend gone down that same path, or is he kind of of a different opinion about this? Oh, no, he believes that uh, what we've seen is what we've seen. Um, I uh, left 
Sydney and Wollongong maybe 27 years ago, and I uh, keep in contact with his name's David. I um, keep in contact with David uh, every now and then. Sometimes, you know, we lose phone numbers and stuff like that. But um, I was talking to him maybe three months ago, and I said to him, do you still remember that day? And he just said the same thing. Yep, I remember that. Now, remember this, Luke, remember that, remember this. Yep, yep, yep. Exactly as we spoke. And uh, I think Dave's, um, he, I told him about uh, the UFO groups that I'm in and I told him about the CE5 group that um, I I do the admin on and I sent him the link, um, even though it's a Perth CE5 group, I sent him the link and I think that he uh, he's now a member of that. But um, I don't think that he's uh, into it as much as I am, yeah. What's your whole thoughts about the, the CE5 thing and do you think it it could relate to the encounters that you had? Um, well, the reason, I, as I was talking before the interview, uh, so the reason that I got into the CE5 is uh, because of the um, the thought that I gave out when I seen what I seen and, and then I thought, geez, I want to see what my mate's seeing as it's following us. And it came in front of me and then come to the side of me. Um, I thought that. I didn't, I didn't say to him. I, I just thought that. And as I got um, more, um, uh, like a friend told me about CE5s maybe 10 years ago, and I read about them and uh, done a lot of research on it before I even thought of um, doing one. And um, the thing that got me was the, uh, um, well, a part of the CE5 is you telepathically ask them to move one direction or light up or come down and things like that. And when I read about that, I thought, well, hey, you know, I kind of believe that because of that instance of what happened in 92. So then I um, I got onto uh, the CE5 Perth group and put up a event. Um, I've got 100 acres out here in a beautiful town called Beverly and um, a, a few people from the CE5 group came and um, we initiated contact through the CE5 protocol. Um, at that time, maybe one flash in the sky. Uh, then from there on, I... Uh, done a few CE5s by myself and with my family and my children, you know, and um, we'd sit out in the paddock and we'd do the CE5 and we'd watch the sky uh, and we'd see things going across the sky and we'd telepathically say, you know, I'd say, oh, look at that up there. Look at that. Look how it's moving okay, let's ask it to turn right. And we'd say, turn right, and it would turn right. And then it would turn right again, you know, and then another thing would come along and there'd be a big circle in the sky that would make, and then they'd light up and disappear, you know. Um, that would have been the second one that we'd done as a family, not as an event. Uh, then I went to another event down in a place called Muckenborough, which is further on the coast and um, there was about four people and they'd done, they'd been doing CE5s for years and um, oh, we've seen lights, uh, big flashes in the sky, things moving around all over the place. Uh, it was rather good and it gives us all a really good feeling. Um, recently, um, my wife was sitting outside, just just sitting outside at night, looking around, and um, there was a uh, big, huge ball in the sky, mate, <laughs> and it floated 
over the house, <laughs> you know. Um, so we've uh, since we've been doing the CE fives, we're seeing a lot more action in the sky and stuff like that. So yeah, I'd be, I'd, um, I'm a believer. So um, I just want to see more and using the CE five protocol seems to be um, the way to do it. Really, yeah. Is it is it something that you would be ever cautious about or or anything like that just because how can you be sure of what you're contacting oh yeah Uh, i i hear the same i hear that um a lot uh basically for me um and the people that we do it with it's all about um raising your vibration and and sending out love you know to receive you know um you know I don't really believe, you know, well, put it this way, it, what I've seen in in 1990s, um, you know, uh, and if it was bad, it could have really ruined my life. You, you, you know what I mean? So uh, it hadn't ruined my life. It hasn't ruined my life in any way. And... Basically, it's um, through the meditations and through the um, thought sequencing and things like that. It's basically helped me with my life, you you know, uh, make me a happier person and and things like that. And when we do, like I've done the CE5 protocol every day for like six months one time and basically all I ever felt out of it was um, just great vibrations and love, you know. It was like somebody was with me all the time, like, you know, and it just filled me with love all of the time, you know. And when we do the events, it's the same feeling. Uh, I've never had a bad feeling, anything like that. Uh, um, yeah, so yeah, I, you know, I don't, I don't think it's um, a bad thing to do, really. No, and you know, it it definitely sounds like you're having positive outcomes, and and you know, you're achieving the the outcomes that you're wanting from it, and I think that's really, really good, and obviously, you know, really important for for the journey that you're looking to to go through with uh with your c5 um meditation and, and and all of that what do you my question is though what do you think it is that you're potentially contacting uh, yeah, so I've, been, I've been thinking about that you know maybe um sometimes i think it's just maybe my higher self you know and um, I'm just seeing my higher self up in the sky, kind of thing. If you if you know what I mean, you know. Um, but then again, um, yeah, um, yeah. Then again, you know, it could be uh, fifth dimension, the fifth dimension, the uh, you know, spacecraft, extraterrestrials, you know. So, yeah, whatever it is, whatever it is, it, um, they they light up in the sky, they um, move around and they, when you ask them to do something like turn left or turn right, they do it. Um, yeah, so, yeah, whatever it is, it's good. It's... It's a question I like to ask people who who do CE5 because I think it's such a, a personal question because every every person kind of has their own journey when it comes to this. So it's it's never a kind of a, a got you question because it's always just the more so a question of well what do you think it it is and really what does it mean to you? So you know, sorry if I if I made you feel a little bit uneasy about it, but 
it's it's just something that always fascinates me because the the whole C five movement I think is quite quite an interesting movement and you know a lot I have a lot of friends who who believe it and they they would honestly bet their lives on it that what they're doing is is legit what they're doing is is right what they're doing is 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 benefiting them and the world and i think that's fantastic yeah that's right you know um if it makes somebody happy and um you know they've encountered problems in their lives and they find a group of people that um basically teach them to meditate for starters um and uh find themselves and be as one with like a group well well you know that's a start for uh, anybody really uh there, there's a, there's a lot of lonely people out there i know i didn't get into it because i was lonely or anything like that i got into it cuz i believe that um you know we can communicate with uh other beings you know some say they're light beings some say they're uh, fifth dimensional beings, uh, some call them extraterrestrials, um, you know. So that's why I'm in the, the that's why I like doing it. Uh, but I have met a, a few people that um, have had problems in their lives and they um, come along and, um, you know, they learn how to meditate. They learn how to become one in a group and uh, things like that, you know. I, I think it's great for uh, for everybody, you know, it, because it's all about love and raising your vibrations and um, forgetting the world kind of thing, if you know what I mean. Yeah, um, a- absolutely. And I think... It's just so amazing that you've had this incredible night with these these UFOs and these these orbs, and it's just had such a, a beneficial impact on your life. I think that is beautiful. Yeah, yeah, it, it, yes, it, it's uh, it's great. Um, you know. Uh, yeah, I uh, these um, the craft and the orbs that I seen that night. Uh, I'll never forget that. Um, sometimes, to tell you the truth, I feel like um, want to go through like hypnotherapy regression to that time, you know, to to see if there's something that I've forgotten or anything like that. It's because I heard that of what a lot of people do, you know. And then you kind of think, well, do I really, really want to know that? You know, <laughs> yeah, that you was know actually I mean? that was actually going to be a question I was going to ask you there, Luke, about if you ever had any missing time, or if you ever if that ever occurred to you. Because I know you weren't really a, a UFO nut back then, but now that you you know a little bit more about it, like, have you ever thought back to that night and thought, hmm, did? Did something else happen? Yeah, well, I do think about that a lot, you know, and that's what I was saying, you know, with this regression stuff and all of that. And, um, you know, uh, uh, and and then you you think about that and you kind of think, well, okay, it would be really cool to know, you know, okay, um, what I've seen is what I've seen. I know what I've seen with that story that I've told you. Well, not a story, the, the, what, what I, what happened. And um, I remember a fair bit of it. I, I, that's exactly what I remember. Uh, but then again, you know, I I go, well, is there more to it over the years of um, getting more into the to the scene of it all? It's kind of like, oh God, you know, these people have seen things, wild things like that you know, that I've seen and then they've got missing time and then they then they find out they've been abducted and then they find out they've been abducted for years and stuff like that. Now, do I really want to know that? You know what I mean? Is it a thing that I would be able to mentally be able to deal with? 
if you if you know what I mean. Absolutely. Sometimes uh, ignorance is bliss when it comes to something like that. Yeah, no, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so, yeah, um, it'd be okay to do it, but, yeah, I, I don't think... Um, but no, well, not at the moment. No, I don't think I'll ever do that. But uh, I'm happy doing the CE5s and meeting other people that are that have seen things because we all sit around and um, talk about when, before we do it, we talk about why you want to do the CE5s and has anybody ever had encounters and everybody's had an encounter that you meet. Um, some are small, some are big, some are, you know, like out there, you know, it's kind of like, we all believe that's the main thing. We all believe each other and we go, well, you know, no, you're not crazy. You're here with a whole heap of other people that believe. So, uh, welcome. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Believe Paranormal and UFO podcast. If you have had an encounter and you would like to share it, please get in touch with me. My email address is believepod at gmail.com. Finally, don't forget to follow us on all our social media outlets and be sure to join our Discord server to talk to other listeners of the show. You'll find all these links in our show notes. Thank you.